So welcome to our Equinox meditation. I was just talking about um, tragedy, and of course there's always joy, but the tragedy that exists in the world and how many people become so afraid or feel so paralyzed by tragedy or by what's going on in the world that they have no control over, that many of us, and I've been guilty of this, have become, um, put our heads in the sand, put our blinders on and just pretend it's not happening, whether it's the floods, whether it's earthquakes, whether it's wars, whether it's suffering in your own community, whether it's illness. And, you know, when I was in Assisi just recently, <clears throat> I, um, there was a couple of things that came up that, that I felt um, hopeless about. And I know some of us feel that way occasionally. And one of my friends said, you know, I don't want to know anything I can't do anything about. And I said, well, why can't you do anything about it? You might not be able to stop a war. You might not be able to feed the world. You might not be able to um, give housing to people in need. But there's always something that I can do. And there's always something that you can do. And whether it's something small in your community, like giving someone a smile in the grocery line, or whether it's simply to sit in your room, in your cave, and close your eyes and sincerely pray for the end of suffering. Now, as I said, I was just in um, the Chain Lakes. I don't know if anyone knows that up north of Chicago. I don't know much about it, but it's become a place I go visit once every year because one of my dear friends is there and she is, she's been really a lifeline for me and, and a mother to me in many ways. And she lives there now and she's in her stage four cancer. And as people know, um, others that are in, have cancer and I had cancer myself, one of my experiences was, was that people tend to walk away from tragedy, walk away from suffering, feel helpless and don't know what to do and just almost pretend it's not happening. It's just to save your own life, I understand that. But with her, I, I really, I know to move toward suffering. And this goes for whether it's a friend who's suffering, a family member, a, an animal, the world, is to bring your attention to it in the form of a prayer. You know, may you be free from suffering. May you have a moment of peace. May you experience joy even in the midst of suffering. It's possible, you know. And so I was just there with her and it was so beautiful because I used to feel like there was something I needed to do to help prepare someone to die. And the truth is <clears throat> everybody knows how to do it even though we don't think we do. The reason I'm talking about this is because I know in your life and still in mine, there are many scary uh, or let's just say there's a lot of suffering that you're aware of and my suggestion to you is to remember how courageous you are, is to remember how brave you are, and to remember that there is something you can do about it, whether it's sending a, a sincere prayer, or whether it's to send a smile or make a phone call, whatever it may be, but know that you're brave. I mean, we've been through a lot together, and you've got a lot of courage and stamina and strength and uh, it was Thich Nhat Hanh, the Vietnamese Buddhist monk that used to say, you know, there's nothing more powerful and there's nothing stronger than gentleness. And there's nothing more gentle that's, than strength. And I know that they can coexist. I know they can coexist. Now, some of you know that um, since last year, we've been leading meditations on a regular basis. Uh, Susie's been leading them on Mondays. I think uh, Erica and Karen have been leading them on Wednesdays. I lead them once a month. And there are many more people that are leading meditations. And it's on the Feast for the Soul. You can go to that website and look at the calendar of events. One thing that happened when we were in Assisi, because I met Susie von Mensenkamp there. I met Anne Vetter there. They, Anne came from Germany. Susie came over from Ireland. And we met in Assisi. And there was one particular day we sat at that hermitage, which is up at the top of this mountain. And there are all these outdoor altars. And these outdoor altars, you know, might be dedicated to Mary Magdalene or Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus or Jesus or St. Francis or Santa Chiara, which is St. Clair, for those of you who know the poor Clares. So we sat at St. Francis's outdoor altar. 
and this group of Italian people came and I didn't understand Italian, that will not happen again, I'm gonna learn Italian, but when they came up, they, they dangled their rosary beads in front of me and said, can we do this in their Italian? And I understood, to, and I said, see, it was just me and eight or 10 of these beautiful people. So they began their rosary in Italian and it went on for quite a while. And as I'm sitting here, here comes Anne and Susie coming up to this altar. Now, for those of you who are aware, Susie asked people to put in the prayer, she has a prayer um, list. And we had this huge list of people we were praying for. And as the, as the rosary was coming to an end and Susie and I sat there and we prayed and said the names aloud for everyone who asked us to. And then so out of the blue at another outdoor altar, here comes a choir of Germans singing, I don't know what in German, but the most beautiful hymns. And it was all so magical between the rosary, the silence, the prayers, the hymns, and all of a sudden there were these sirens. So the, the hymns and the sirens were coexisting. And I said, isn't this the way it is? The hymns and the sirens coexist. And it doesn't mean that joy doesn't mean the elimination of suffering, because obviously someone was. And suffering doesn't mean the elimination of joy and beauty. So I just, I really got that. And then there was one more time and I'll, I'll stop talking, guide us into a meditation. And welcome to everyone who's just joining us. My name is Sarah McLean, glad you're here. Um, the one other aspect, we were walking down along in Assisi underneath the chapel where Francis of Assisi is laid to rest. He's, he's underneath in the, in the basement or probably not the right word, but of this beautiful church. And it's very holy to go there, whether you're, whatever religion you happen to be. There's something so magical about this man and his life and how he followed that inner call, this inner call and did it to the at the expense, unfortunately, maybe, of, of his family relationships. He just knew to follow that inner knowing. He just knew. And those voices of doubt and discouragement didn't have a huge echo in him because he was able to follow that inner knowing and that following his strength. So we're walking along the woods called the Bosca, underneath where he's been laid out for the last 700 years, I think. And um, for those of you who've heard of Thich Nhat Hanh, the, the Vietnamese monk, he's got not, no longer here, but he always talks about mindful walking. So we're mindfully and silently walking into these woods. They're going way down into a valley. And the church bells ring as they do in Assisi. They ring and they ring and they ring. And we decided to treat this as a mindfulness bell. Now, I suggest that you do it too if you hear bells, whether it's your phone or whether it's the kitchen timer or whether you are lucky enough to live in a community where there are bells. It's to stop what you're doing, take a deep breath, relax your body, and be completely present to the environment you're in and who you're with. As we did that, we stopped along the trail. It was so potent, these bells went on and on. We all started relaxing, and I'm gonna invite you to do that as you're sitting here with me, just relaxing your body. We started to take some deeper breaths through the nose and just welcoming every sound. And as the bell stopped, there was this palpable moment of silence. Then that alert went off on our phones. We're having it here in America on October 4th. It was so loud. It was so amazing. It was, it punctuated the silence with this amazing screaming sound from everybody's cell phones in Italy. And um, again, it's the coexistence of this beauty of the silence and this huge, loud screaming noise. And my, my lessons really were to welcome everything, welcome everything. Now, some of you here have a belief in God. Some of you are Christian, some of you are Jewish, some of you are atheists, some of you are agno agnostic. So in no way do I want to leave anyone out or exclude anyone. But I do wanna share that for me, the reason I went there was to awaken to the reality 
in my mind, the reality that everything, everyone, all the time is an expression of God. Now that is a leap, I know. In the world of war and suffering and evil, it's a, it's a leap. But I also know that it's possible. But the forgetting is also extremely possible. And of course, I forget already. And I have to bring myself back to this moment of peace. So it happened though, I could, it was, it was so amazing because as some of you may know, I have chickens down here. And sometimes the chickens just go on and on and on far after they've laid their eggs and it can really disturb my nervous system. And sometimes I just have to stop what I'm doing and go down there and talk to them a little bit. But there was so much noise in this chapel that I was praying in and um, it was drilling and helicopters and people screaming, children crying. And for one, probably half an hour, everything was beautiful. Every sound, every thought, every moment was beautiful. And I wish that for you too. I wish that for you. So let's get started in our meditation. Uh, Sue, thanks for letting people in. And thank you for taking the time out for this Equinox meditation. It's really about surrender. It's really about letting go um, just like a tree easily lets go of the leaves, easily drops its leaves, easily moves into the next season. Surrender really um, requires a willingness to accept what is, a willingness to accept what is. We all want to be in the light and feeling uh, that peace of silence or feeling that joy of existence. And here comes the news or here comes the suffering. And for us, it's really just receiving everything as if we're in a river and here it comes. One of the things I noticed for myself is that I, uh, and you may notice it too, is that there's a, a subtle tenseness that you may feel in your body, like a bracing, whether it's from your childhood or from the, the uh, assault of the world. So I'm gonna start our meditation uh, with a body awareness practice so you can let go as easily as a tree lets go of a leaf. You can let go of the bracing and then we'll move into breath awareness and uh, taking refuge in the heart. Uh, in Buddhism, just to define that for you, in Buddhism, they talk a little bit about taking refuge. What is your refuge? Whether it's a place in your mind's eye, a cave, you remember, a sunset, someone's arms, the company of an angel, or being uh, loved by God or Jesus, or some other godlike godhead, a divine mother, a refuge is, could even be a, a prayer. So each one of us hopefully has a refuge that we turn to, whether it's a repetition of a mantra or whether it's a breath awareness practice or whether it's an affirmation. So <clears throat> in this meditation, we'll be including and moving into that refuge. So as you know, probably, if you've been on any of my meditations, I often say, you know, it's okay if you get distracted. It's part of the process. It creates a mindfulness muscle, a meditation muscle, when you get distracted and you remember to come back. This is how life is. This is how our spiritual practice is, is you get distracted from what you know to be true. And then you recognize it. You're in the drama of somebody else or the world. And then you come back. And this is what we do in meditation. Distraction, returning. This creates that muscle, right? Also being kind to yourself. There's no need in any, for any reason to beat yourself up. You are lovely and beautiful. And even if you get distracted, it's okay. Even if you have pain in your body, it's okay. Even if you um, decide you wanna check your email, it's okay. So we recognize Thoughts are okay. Be kind to yourself. Let go of expectations. Every meditation is different. It's like you're standing in the middle of that river, that stream, and here comes something new. Always, 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 always new. And um, let go of expectations. Don't try to have an experience you're not having. And then we'll stick with the whole practice. And today's practice is going to be about 20 minutes. Okay. 
So settle down in your cave, whatever that looks like. And you can close your eyes if you like. And give yourself some deeper breaths through your nose. And with each deep breath, allow your body to relax, to let go of any tension. Breathing in slowly and deeply through the nose. Breathing out slowly and fully through your nose. And then letting go of the need to deepen the breath and allow the breath to be in its natural rhythm and depth. There's no need to control or regulate your breathing. We want to ask ourselves a question before we dive in. I invite your, you to ask yourself, what do I live for? What do I live for? It's okay if you don't have an answer, simply asking the question activates the answer to meet the question at some stage. letting go of that question and any answers that may have met it. Begin now to bring your attention to your body. Thinking of your attention as a beam of love. As you scan your body, starting with your scalp, Inviting your body to relax and let go. Your forehead. Shining that beam of love on your beautiful face. Your ears, your eyes, your mouth. And even the interior of your, your skull, your brain. Bringing your attention down to your throat and your neck. Inviting softness, and gentleness. And go of any need to defend. Lowering your shoulders, letting your arms hang comfortably in your lap. Scanning your back, seeing if there are any areas of tension you can invite to relax. your front body, your heart center, your rib cage, your diaphragm. Your belly. Your hips. Settling into this space, softening the entire body 
in some of the subtle ways we hold it. As you pay attention to your thighs, your knees, your lower legs. Your beautiful feet. Noticing the life force that may be circulating in your body, the vibration, the pulsing. You might feel it in your hands. Perhaps you feel your pulse. I'm bringing your attention now to the gentle rise and fall of your chest as your body breathes. This heart space can be a refuge could be that place of prayer, a church of silence, the home of remembering. Right behind the breastbone, you can feel that heart space. Perhaps you might see it, feel it, know it. Continue, if you can, to dwell in the center of your chest in this heart space. If the mind is busy, letting those thoughts just come and go as you dwell in this, uh, this heart center. The body constantly knows how to let go. Let's go of the exhale. Let, let's go of time. Let's go of experience. Let's go of thoughts. As you continue to breathe, begin to pay attention to the inhale and as it travels into the lungs and that pause, that letting go before the exhale, following the breath with your attention as it moves in and out of the center point of you. Letting your breath charm your attention. There's nothing you're supposed to feel. There's nothing you're supposed to do. Whatever you're feeling right now is perfect as you notice the breath and let that be the anchor for your attention. You're in the flow of this moment, the sounds that come and go, the breath that comes and goes. 
the thoughts that come and go, the body that comes and goes. Perhaps you sense the gentleness of this moment, your gentle nature. Perhaps you feel the strength in this moment. The strength of being exactly who you are. These qualities are who you are, this gentleness and strength, this ability to surrender to what's coming, what's here, and knowing you can respond with compassion and love. If you feel yourself drifting into another time or space, you can let your breath anchor you deeper into the heart space where you can relax, where you don't have to think or be or do anything. And invite the feeling, if you like, of being completely and unconditionally loved. However you access that feeling, whether it's in your imagination or whether you call upon a divine figure or a family member or an animal or nature herself, Imagine in this moment that you are completely, completely loved for who you are. Perhaps you imagine this love coming from yourself. That you hold compassion and empathy for yourself and this human experience of joy and sorrow, of expansion and contraction. of remembering who you really are and forgetting. This compassion you have for yourself in this human experience. clinging, 
and the letting go. We can practice with the breath. I'm gonna share some affirmations with you. I invite you to invite them into your heart center. Silently repeating them. I unconditionally surrender to the good. I surrender to peace. I know I am blessed. By surrendering how I want it to go, I open myself to a more intimate spiritual understanding. I surrender to the sense of freedom, to my inner knowing. I recognize that life loves me. I surrender to the permanence of this consciousness that lives in me, through me, as me. And I surrender to the passing of time and the changing world around me, knowing there's this permanence of being, of love and of God. I surrender my concerns to a power much greater than me. 
the power that steers the stars and makes our hearts beat, the power that makes the grass grow and the world turn. I surrender with the knowingness that this divine power will take my burdens and orchestrate the perfect outcome. And in this moment, if you like, you can begin to offer your burdens on the altar of your heart to a power greater than yourself, to an angel, a saint, a divine one, or the power of the universe. Like a prayer, you might offer the burdens of another or of the world or of your own personal nature, but you don't feel like you can fully handle or control. We'll do this for a few minutes. Recognizing what you surrender is in good hands. Rendering all your concerns, worldly, personal, as large as they may be, that you no longer need to carry these. You no longer need to hold on to them or ignore them. The joy and the suffering are part of this river of life. Being kind to yourself includes surrendering what you don't and can't handle to something bigger, to an angel of mercy.
as you continue to breathe, being sure your body's relaxed. You might begin to breathe in the light of love, breathing it in through your heart center if you like, and imagine it traveling through every cell of your body. That your cells are dancing and moving with this spark, with this light of love. You can even imagine yourself glowing with this light beyond your skin, beyond your mind. into the environment around you. With each breath, your light grows brighter. Lighting up the areas of personal doubt and fear extinguishing the darkness, And if it's easy for you, you can breathe in the light and let go of burdens on the exhale. Recognizing the burdens are in good hands. You're in good hands. You're in God's hands. And we'll begin to come out of our meditation, keeping your eyes closed. Simply sit in the being rather than the doing. I'm going to play you a beautiful song that's been helpful to me, and, and I invite you to sit and listen to it.
This is a new practice for some of you. You can open your eyes when you feel ready, deepen your breath. Breathing in the light of love and exhaling your burdens. It's really helping me to surrender and uh, never know what's going to happen next. So it's great to have this reminder to remember you can surrender. Thank you for joining me in this meditation. I love being with you. I'm going to stop the recording now. <laughs>